This morning I walked by the Lincoln Memorial. You'll be hearing a lot about Lincoln, Lincoln, the 200th anniversary in just a month, uh, a little over a month of, of his birth. Um, we'll certainly, no doubt, think about the partial fulfillment of what he worked for and fondly hoped and fervently prayed for uh, when on January 20th, Barack Obama will take his oath of office. The Lincoln Memorial is a monument to compassion and wisdom and strength in the face of uncertainty and a monument to government. Remember the final words that I read on the wall this morning, that government shall not perish from the earth. Of course, it was not just any government, it was the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Madison famously said, if people, if, if men, he said, if people were angels, no government would be necessary. No. I mean, it's true, the Madisonian vision gave us the checks and balances and controls within government and controls on government that are so necessary. And I should add, need some repair work at the moment, some repointing in the bricks. <laughs> but even if we were populated entirely by people of goodwill, even if we were all angels, we would still have competing legitimate interests. That is the function of government, to balance those competing interests. How do we do it? Well, Lincoln, once again, said it best. We will start an experiment conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all are equal. We could have walked by, I could have walked by the FDR, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial this morning. It was actually raining too hard. <laughs> Uh, with its moving George Siegel, New Jersey sculpture of the decent man standing in bread lines. Another monument to government. A monument to the ability of government to help people. To make a difference in people's lives. We know government can make a difference in people's lives and maybe the best argument is the counter, are the counter examples. Burma, Sudan, and actually some pretty serious errors here in the United States where our government has not been working up to potential. There are enormous divides in our society. In fact, I would say there are enormous holes in almost every area, in the environment, in health and health care, in education, international affairs, certainly in the economy, especially we see, as Lincoln did, that soldiers pay dearly for the mistakes of politicians. It is for us here to be dedicated to the unfinished work of America. It really is a time of hope. With all of our present plight, hope which might be the contrary of fear, fear which has led us to do so many stupid things in recent years, at least the antidote, if not the contrary. We have this hope, even as our nation continues to be tested. Whether a nation so conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all are equal can endure. Historian uh, David Hackett Fisher has uh, published uh, a, an interesting book a few years ago. Please come in, Henry. Thank you. Um, called Liberty and Freedom. He begins by saying in the year 1843, a bright young scholar 
was collecting evidence on the origins of the American Revolution. He interviewed Captain Levi Preston, then in mid-19th century, 91 years old, a cantankerous Yankee who had fought on the day of Lexington and Concord. So he must have been one of the last surviving soldiers of the Revolution. Captain Preston, the historian, began, what made you go to Concord to fight? The old soldier bristled at the idea that anyone had made him fight. What did I go for, he replied. The scholar, missing his meaning, tried again. Were you opposed to the Stamp Act? I never saw any stamps, Captain Preston answered. I always understood that none were ever sold. Well, what about the tea tax? Well, the tea tax, I never drank a, do I never drank a drop of the stuff. The boys flew, threw it all overboard. But I suppose you've been reading Harrington and Sidney and Locke about the eternal principle, principle of liberty. I never heard of those men, Captain Preston said. The only books we had were the Bible, the Catechism, Watts' Psalms and hymns, and the almanacs. Well, what was the matter, young man? Captain Preston replied. What we meant in going for those redcoats was this. We always had been free. We meant to be free always. They didn't mean we should. <laughs>